My name is Luther Talbert. I work at a Montana State University and the Montana Agricultural Experiment Station, and I'm the spring wheat breeder for the state. Wheat is um, the most widely grown crop in the world and grown really all over the place. And one of the great things about wheat really is its uh, wide adaptation. And even in harsh climates, for instance, Montana, that wheat can grow. And the big issues with growing wheat in Montana are the weather, first of all. And then we have this other really terrible pest that's uh, localized here in Montana. We're the epicenter in the world for an insect called the wheat stem sawfly. And uh, what it does is it lays eggs inside of wheat stems. When it does that, it actually causes uh, uh, no damage at the time of laying the eggs. But when the eggs hatch, the small larvae start to bore up and down inside of the stem. And when they get bigger, they start chewing through the nodes in the growing wheat plant. And when that happens, that's when they start really causing a lot of damage to the wheat by reducing the, uh, the size of the head on the wheat and, and decreasing yield. And then finally, at the end of the season, the larvae crawl down to the base of the plant and cut the stem off. And so the uh, wheat lodges, plants fall onto the ground. So this is actually a, a very terrible problem for a large part of the wheat growing region in Montana. Plant breeding is probably the uh, best solution to pretty much any agronomic problem that a grower would face. And uh, we work with a lot of different people who are experts in certain areas. For instance, we work very closely with the entomologist. In agriculture, entomologists tend to be focused on trying to decrease crop losses in a very, very straightforward way. Oftentimes, for lots of, lots of crops, um, we can do our initial research focusing on whether or not there is a pesticide that would work to control the pest and if it did, how to use it most successfully. Um, but ultimately, as entomologists, we're also charged with the idea of developing a suite of strategies for controlling pests. With the wheat stem sawfly in particular, it turns out that because the sawfly lives most of its life inside the stem, it's fairly sequestered from any pesticides that might be applied anyway. And so there pretty much are no pesticide alternatives for the wheat stem sawfly. And resistance, genetic resistance, is really our only choice. The key mechanism of host plant resistance that, that growers have relied on historically is what we call a solid stem wheat. And basically that's wheat that rather than being hollow, like it's probably its natural state, has a high expression of pith, at least in certain populations. And that solid stem character was first identified in the uh, mid to late 1940s. The solid stemmed wheats, it turned out, impede the larvae and often kill it. And it's basically a, a very simple sort of genetic uh, trait that we could cross those genes from this Portuguese variety into the varieties that otherwise were well adapted to Montana to basically kill the sawfly. And so what that means is the sawfly emerges, lays its eggs in the stem, and the larvae hatches and is uh, sort of stopped by having this solid stem and often die. And the wheat basically resists any uh, effects of the wheat stem sawfly. The one thing that may be worrisome about solid stem wheat is the fact that as a resistance mechanism it's all based on basically the same genetic character that was identified all the way back to the 1940s. So every solid stem population of wheat we have out in the state of Montana ultimately has the same genes that make it solid. And when you have something out there since that time that's a long time for the insects to be experiencing that type of host plant resistance. It creates the possibility for something like a resistance in the insect to that host plant resistance. And so one of the projects that we're working on is with the entomology project here to identify other mechanisms of resistance that we could add to our plants as well as solid stems to try to basically shore up that resistance and give growers a more reliable control measure uh, than solid stems happens to be. Like for instance, we identified the type of host plant resistance called antizenosis, which is whether the insect likes or prefers certain volatile compounds with very characteristic odors. Most of those vary from one variety of, of wheat to another. And so what we've been doing is we've been working with the uh, wheat breeding group developing varieties that are less preferred, 
with the idea being that those would have less potential impact from saw fly damage. We have a lot of advantages right now because um, there's technology for doing genetic work, especially molecular biology has really boomed in the last few years for wheat. And so we have a lot of opportunities to associate genes with chromosomes and DNA now that we couldn't do before. And so we're actually very excited about going back to the old ancient varieties and ancient land races where the solid stem resistance was identified and see what else we can find in there. And uh, our goal is really to combine genes from all over the world into the perfect variety that has the best genes to uh, attack the issues that face growers here in Montana.